One of the aspects about Assassin's Creed that makes its stories and its characters so interesting is that since the game's protagonists are presented to us like historical figures, their backstories and the lore surrounding them aligns with that presentation. Thanks to the various pieces of side media, such as the novelizations of each game, the comic book series, side games, and the like, we know the entire life story of almost every protagonist in the series. Unfortunately though, other than Ezio and Altair, we've not seen a single main entry character sequel for any other assassin. So today, we're going to explore the entire life of one of the most beloved characters in the entire series, and one that we saw very little of in his own game. Before we get into the video, it would really help me out if you could hit like, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. And without further ado, let's look at the entire life of Edward Kenway. Edward James Kenway was born in 1693, the son of Welsh farmers that moved to Bristol when he was young. In his late teens, he would encounter a housemaid being outside a tavern and would intervene, causing an altercation that would be stopped by Carol and Scott, a member of the family that the housemaid served. Having already promised her hand in marriage to a wealthy executive, Caroline's father would refuse Edward's approaches, but the two would begin a secret relationship that ended in them marrying each other, causing her father to disown her. This would send the two back to Edward's parents' farm, but Edward would dream of riches and would often spend nights in the tavern nearby. One night, Caroline's father would approach Edward in the tavern, offering him a large sum of money to leave his daughter, but Edward Edward presented a counteroffer, promising to become a privateer in the West Indies where he would seek a great fortune. As he took passage on his assigned ship, the Scott family would burn down Edward's family farm in order to send a message to the young man that the two families were by no means on good terms. After sailing as a privateer for a few years, meeting the likes of Edward Thatch and Benjamin Hornigold, Edward would find himself jobless after the Treaty of 1713, which ended imperial conflict in the area. In turn, Edward would shift to a life of piracy, and after the ship he was working on was destroyed in a stormy battle, he would wash up on Cape Bonavista, where he would come across the former assassin Duncan Walpole. After fighting Walpole, Edward would impersonate the man, travelling to Havana to meet the Templar Governor Torres. Edward would also be introduced to Woods Rogers and Julianne de Cass, who would discuss their plans of finding the observatory with the help of the sage Bartholomew Roberts. This observatory piqued Edward's interest, and he would attempt to break out Roberts to use him for his own financial gain, which would lead to his own capture by the Templars. Aboard a prisoner ship, Edward and newfound ally Adewale would commandeer a ship of their own, naming it the Jackdaw. Edward would take the helm as captain, and for the following few months he would reunite with Thatch, Ben Hornigold, and James Kidd. After many months of sailing with the Nassau pirates, James Kidd, supposed son of famed pirate William Kidd, led Edward through the jungle of Tulum, where he would be taken into a temple. As Kidd and Edward descended into the temple's depths, Kidd explained the creed and the Assassin Templar conflict to him, but Edward took little of what Kidd said meaningfully. After exiting the temple, which itself contained an ancient statue of the sage Edward had met less than a year prior, Edward would meet the mentor of the Assassins in Tulum, Atta Bai, who would banish Edward from the island due to his collusions with the Templars in Havana. Over the following years, Edward would continue hunting Roberts, but would be distracted by the steadily crumbling Pirate Republic, which was divided by the promised pirate pardon issued by Woods Rogers, which would effectively destroy any unity amongst pirates. In efforts to strengthen Nassau, Edward and Thatch, aka Blackbeard, would siege Charlestown and attack a British man of warship to procure medicine for the pirate town. However, this would only make the British more aggressive. Blackbeard would retire to an island off the coast of Carolina, whilst Edward would return to find Nassau blockaded by the Royal Navy. With the help of Charles Vane, he would break this blockade with a fire ship and would return to his own base in Great Inagua. In an effort to bring Blackbeard back to the West Indies, Edward would travel to Carolina where he would find Thatch celebrating his retirement. However, this celebration would be cut short by a nearby British fleet, who would bombard the island, destroying the town. Edward and Thatch would make escape to the Jackdaw and would eventually board an attacking British man of war. However, they would quickly be overwhelmed and Thatch would be decapitated by the British soldiers. Escaping the north, Edward would return to the West Indies and to his hunt of Roberts, who was supposedly aboard a slaver ship. However, before himself and Charles Vane could sail south to find the ship, they found their crew mutinying, led by Jack Rackham. The two would be abandoned on a small island, where they would spend months together, which would eventually send Vane insane, attacking Edward, who would disarm him and leave him alone in the jungle. After a few more days on the island, Edward would be able to hijack a fishing ship, which he would sail back to Great Anagua, where James Kidd, now revealed to actually be the cover identity for Mary Reed, would be waiting with the Jackdaw recovered. Travelling south, past Jamaica and to the coast of Africa, Edward would find the slaver ship Roberts was aboard and would free its crew, aligning himself with Roberts, who told him to meet him at the observatory. 
Reaching the observatory, Edward would see the ISU technology, which allowed the user to see through the eyes of any man or woman on Earth, given they had a vial of their target's blood, which Edward saw a great deal of financial opportunity. However, before he could capitalise on the observatory's power, Roberts would turn on him, selling him out to the British in exchange of the bounty on his head. Edward would be imprisoned for almost a year, and would be joined by Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, who avoided their respective death sentences due to their pregnancies. Thanks to her allegiance to the assassins, Mary would have Atabai and the rest of the Brotherhood infiltrate the prison to rescue her, but unfortunately, Edward and Atabai would be unable to prevent her from dying, after being forced to give birth in the unsanitary prison. As she lay to take her final rest, she made Edward promise that he would change the course of his life. And he agreed. Handing Mary's body to Atabai, the mentor of the assassins would return the assassin robes Edward had donned for almost a decade. Edward would take the robes, but would not fully join the Brotherhood until convinced by Adewale, an induction that would not come without Edward first making amends for his past errors. After aiding Atabai in the defence of Tulum from an attacking fleet of Spanish soldiers, Edward would hunt the Templar Woods Rogers, who would then lead him back to Roberts. Fighting Roberts, Edward would successfully kill the sage and acquire the crystal skull that powered the observatory. He would travel back to the observatory, where he would hunt and finally assassinate Governor Torres. Following this, Edward pledged to return to England to reunite with his wife, but he would be regretfully informed that Caroline had died two years earlier, and that her daughter, Edward's daughter, was all that remained. Edward organised his daughter, Jennifer, to be brought to the West Indies, and he would meet her for the first time in 1722. Later, Edward would return to England, where he would hunt down his former father-in-law for burning down his parents' farm all those years ago. It would then be revealed to Edward that Caroline's former arranged fiancé, Matthew Haig, was in fact a Templar, but Edward would be prevented from killing the man after meeting Robert Walpole, the cousin of Duncan Walpole and the first Prime Minister of Great Britain. Robert claimed to be non-partisan in the fight between the Assassins and Templars, but offered Edward a full pardon for his piracy in return for the lives of Haig and of Wood Rogers who had survived and travelled back to England. Accepting the pardon, Edward would join the British Brotherhood in London, eventually becoming a master assassin. However, he would refuse to take the mantle of mentor, seeing the rank as too self-indulgent and hierarchical instead taking up a co-leadership role alongside Miko. The two men's leadership would see the Brotherhood thrive in London, and soon all Templar threat in the city would be eliminated. Without imminent threat, Edward would begin searching for First Civilization temples, and in his search he would come across the Shroud of Eden, an item which allowed the user to heal themselves from any wound. Edward chose to hide this discovery, locking the Shroud in the Tower of London, within the confines of an Isu lockbox, and would hide the key atop the St Paul's Cathedral. In 1725, Edward would have his second child, Haytham, who he would train in combat from the time he was a young boy. However, he would never reveal his past as a pirate and as an assassin. Edward would go on to become great friends with his property manager, Reginald Birch, who made continued efforts to court his daughter, Jennifer. However, Jennifer would discover that Birch was a Templar, and Edward would go on to confront him, and the two would have a screaming match that ended in Birch storming out of the Kenway Manor. In December 1735, the Kenway Manor would be attacked by a number of masked men, who kidnapped Jennifer. Trying to fight off the intruders, an older and less practiced Edward would find himself caught by a sword strike to his chest, leaving him to die with his life's work in London soon to be undone by Birch. Birch would take Edward's journal, which contained information about the first civilization temples, and would pass it to Edward's son Haytham, who, clueless to his father's past, would join the Templar Order alongside Birch, and with the journal would track down the Grand Temple and the colonies. So, all in all, Edward's life was a truly tragic one, a redemption tale that in the end showed that sometimes you can never truly escape your past. Although Standing is one of the most important assassins to date, his legacy was stained not only by his years of piracy, but by his son's fall into the Templar Order. But despite everyone he ever loved dead or imprisoned, Edward still sought to show that a man is never truly defined, that people can always change, grow and better the world around them. He may have lost everything on a personal level, but that only inspired him to do what was most meaningful, to aspire to a greater good. And to me, that is the true lasting legacy of Edward Kenway. Not a legacy of redemption, but one of perseverance. Thank you all so much for watching, if you did enjoy make sure to hit like, and if you're new here make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. Also, make sure to comment which characters you want to see me do next in the series. With all that being said, I've been Joe, aka Fenoscarab, and I will see you in the next one.